Hi. How are you? Um, it's so good to talk to you again. We, uh, your podcast, we sat down for a podcast recently. And um, this is, we're, today we're answering some reader and follower questions for you. We have got into, we got into a little bit of, um, we had a very extensive Q&A on our podcast. The link is right here in the chat um, and it's live right now. Uh, it includes all sorts of um, information and topics, including some of Joanna's favorite things. But right now we're going to get into some really, really good fan and follower questions. So Joanna, mm -hmm. can you show me how to properly apply and layer your products before bed? Um, well, I think that, of course, you have to wash your face before bedtime. Um, you know, when I do a, a cleanse of my skin at night at the end of a day, whether you're wearing makeup or just sunscreen, um, you want to make sure you do a thorough cleanse. Nighttime is your body's time to repair itself. So I always do upward circles when I'm cleansing my skin, um, making sure to work the cleanser into my lashes and everything because um, typically I only do one cleanse. I'm not a double cleanse person unless I'm wearing a ton of makeup. Um, like for an event or something. Right. Um, and then you would do um, ideally your supernova serum, which is my retinol serum. And then, um, and that goes everywhere, face, neck, decollete. I even put the residue on my hands. Um, and then I typically put on the rejuvenating serum over that just because I like to be kind of... Uh, super hydrated before bedtime. Um, while you sleep, that retinol is building you some new collagen, it's repairing your skin, and um, it's really the best way to go for bedtime. How do, you, how do you feel about makeup wipes or like facial cleansing wipes? Do you feel that they, do they move around the dirt or is there a way that you can use makeup cleansers or, or, or wipes in the form of a wipe in a way that actually gets the face clean? Well, I mean, I think I find wipes to be a bit of a challenging topic just because for example, they're not really cleaning your face, right? I mean, you're getting makeup off, but you're also moving it around the skin. Um, so I think, you know, if you're one that struggles uh, with any type of skin condition, if you break out just when you get your period or you break out every once in a while, makeup wipes are not good. My skin is extremely dry and I find that it just doesn't make you feel very clean to use them. Um, so I'm not a okay. huge fan of makeup wipes. If you have to use something, maybe I would do a micellar water uh, with cotton, you know, um, but I always, I need to wash my face at night. Um, so Can you explain I, what micellar water is? It's kind of like, um, think of it as like a, a toner that instead of stripping away the oils, it's infusing your skin with some uh, hydration. So it's gentle for around the eye area. There's usually things in it like chamomile and calming ingredients. There's usually some hyaluronic acid in there, things that calm and hydrate uh, the skin in a nutshell. If you're wearing, oh, yeah. like, sometimes for events, I, I wear a lot of eye makeup. So you want to remove your eye makeup first, and then I always wash my face afterward. So I feel like you prefer micellar water to a, a wipe for that kind of thing. Yeah, and that would only be because I also wash my face afterward. I don't yeah, just let it your, sit there. Right, that's not your only step. I love this next question from Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I have an avocado tree in my backyard. Do you have any suggestions for what I can mix with avocado to create my own mask? I love that. Um, that's an awesome question. I love that too. Avocado is actually so great for your skin. And I love a do-it-yourself mask. So I avocado with... Um, either oatmeal or yogurt. Um, 
because both are very soothing for the skin and very hydrating for the skin. And the avocado is super hydrating. It has um, a lot of B vitamins. It has a lot of fatty acids in there. So it'll calm skin that's overly sensitized, um, but it's also hydrating. And you're gonna make your skin look really glowy. So I would maybe do Either oh, wow. your choice, either yogurt or oatmeal. I would put a quarter of avocado, and then I'd put a um, a couple of tablespoons of honey in there. What does honey do? Honey's antibacterial, correct? Very good. It's antibacterial. It's also hydrating. So, again, safe to use even if you um, you know break out safe to use if you have acne, but also really great if your skin is sensitive or dry. And with the oatmeal, do you mix water in with that or how to, or just, is it fun? Yeah, you cook, kind of you cook, you cook the oatmeal. Cook the oatmeal. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Dawn is at, this is a really good question for, I think a lot of us are going through this right now. Dawn is asking, how can I remedy my rough hands from all the hand washing? They even bleed and crack sometimes. What are you doing? Um, yeah, me too, I have to say. It's crazy right now because I feel like I'm using a lot of rubbing alcohol uh, even before the, uh, the stay at home order. Um, in the salon, we use a lot of rubbing alcohol and That's so right. forth just to, to sterilize. It's one of the, um, the approved, the stateerial cleansers we use for the salon I would say to keep it simple and you know uh, go with user and hand cream something really basic something nice and thick I have hand cream in my nightstand and I put it on at bed uh, at bedtime every night and I also have hand cream stationed everywhere everybody's washing their hands like you know the sink that everybody uses when they first come in the house um, you know, like if my right. husband just went to Whole Foods, we've got the hand cream right there. So after you wash your hands, you immediately put cream on. And I would just do that every you time I wash my hands. Yeah. Right. So follow, follow every hand washing with moisturizing and you'll kind of counteract those effects. Lila is asking, what do you use personally to moisturize your feet? Um, I actually um, bought Eucerin has like a really thick, insanely thick cream. You know, it's something that people use in hospitals, like on people, on older patients or people with extreme psoriasis. Um, so I just use that just because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of um, minty foot creams. I just don't yeah. like the smell. Yeah, I don't like my feet to be cold. It's they're all meant to be like cooling and stuff. I just want them to be moisturized. So I just use a very a heavy cream on them as well. And again, it's something that I do before I go to sleep. Pat, these are really great questions too. And I feel like you have the perfect answers for these. And I'm, I, I've, I've suffered from the same thing. Pat is asking what natural deodorant would you recommend for one that's effective and won't irritate my skin. I, I get the same thing sometimes. A natural deodorant? Yeah, that, that would um, be effective. I mean, they're not, they're certainly not, I think we all know that they're certainly not as effective as regular deodorants, but one that's somewhat effective but doesn't irritate the skin. Uh, you know, I don't really, None of the natural deodorants I've ever tried have really worked for me. Um, but you have to keep in mind that I work, I kind of hunch over people all the time. And so and you have lights um, and, yeah. I, I'm constantly in close contact with my clients. And so I feel like I, that's right. Um, I don't wear perfumes or anything at the office, but equally, I also don't want to feel like sweaty and, and, you know, when I'm running around throughout the day. So I don't have a good answer Point for taken. that. I'm really sorry. Okay. <laughs> and I guess um, the, the, it's, it's followed by another question from Ginny, which is natural deodorants tend to irritate my skin. Why is that? What, what, why is that? Um, about that why a natural, deodorant would irritate the skin? 
A lot of natural deodorants have essential oils in them. And ah. typically that's really challenging for a lot of people to, to use because um, in different concentrations, they can affect your skin differently. And everybody's different. You know, I think that there are challenging ingredients to work with for sure. Um, and that's why you're getting irritation there. Yeah. It's that simple. Um, essentially be irritating. Jaya is asking what steps she can, what steps she needs to complete in order to give herself an at home facial. What is, what is, a, what are the steps of, I guess, what, what are the steps of a, of a facial from beginning to end? If somebody wanted to try to give themselves one with items they have at home. Well, um, if you're going to give yourself a good at home facial, I would absolutely start by washing the face. And then I would do an exfoliation of some kind. Um, my exfoliating mask is both a scrub and it has uh, chemical ingredients that exfoliate, meaning it has pineapple enzymes and lactic acid. So I would scrub the T-zone area and then I would leave it on as a mask everywhere else, mm -hmm. you know, for about 15 minutes. And then mm -hmm. I would follow with a sheet mask. Um, sheet masks are designed to target acute skin conditions. So things that you see when you look at yourself in the mirror for the first time, like, are you breaking out? Is your skin dull? Do you just need hydration? Something like that. So you would pick uh, a sheet mask that addresses that particular concern. Um, when I have a sheet mask on my face, I like to do a little pressure point massage around the eye area so I can depuff a little bit. And I also make sure to bring down the serum that's in the sheet mask onto my neck and onto my decollete because, you know, you want yep. they're very delicate areas. You want to make sure you're addressing that as well. Yeah, making sure that I do that and myself. Then once the sheet mask, I would leave the sheet mask on for maybe 15 or so minutes. And once that comes off, you have all that amazing serum on your skin. So I would do a simple hand over hand massage like this uh, all over the face, include your neck and do your forehead, do your temples. Massage for the face is not only does it feel really good and it's really relaxing, but any esthetician will tell you that a good massage will stimulate collagen production. Wow. It increases oxygenation, um, so it brings you a glow. Um, it increases lymphatic drainage, wow. so it'll contour you. So you want to take a couple of minutes, and hand over hand is really, really simple. Anybody can do it. Or you could do a jade roller, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm, I, I like teaching just the hand over hand because I think yeah. it's easy. And so an upward motion is, is what, how you want to do it. Uh huh. So you start right. out in the neck and work up the face, and that's your. And then at the end of that, then you apply your, your products like your serum, your cream, your eye cream, that kind of thing. Um, Alyssa asks, how can I prep my legs for summer right now? Do you have any? tips for legs for summer? Uh, the best tip I can recommend is to go out and purchase a dry brush. Um, it's a coarse bristle brush. I have one in my line, but you can, it's a very low investment. Between $10 and like $30, you can get a nice brush with it's coarse amazing bristles. amazing how a brush could really do that much um, make that many improvements, right? It It is so amazing. Wow. Um, but you basically, before you get in the shower in the morning, you brush your whole body upward, and maybe you want to spend more time on the outer part of your thigh, maybe spend more time on your booty. Um, two minutes a day, always upward toward the heart, and right. do your whole body. Don't forget your arms, everything. It increases... Um, your circulation, it increases lymphatic drainage, um, it tightens your skin, it boosts collagen production. I swear to God, in two weeks, you'll see a huge difference wow. in your skin, and it's the best investment you can make for your whole body. Wow. 
And yeah, yeah you can find them anywhere, right? They're anywhere, anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Um, we have a question about sunscreen. What do you like to use for sunscreen? I know on the podcast, uh, I'm very into this product. I cannot wait to go and get some myself because I'm in need of some. But you mentioned that you, li you like Ilya's, uh, it's a tinted sunscreen serum was what you had mentioned on the podcast. And we have a link to that in the show notes. But is there anything else you like to use for sunscreen? Maybe. Yeah. So the, the Ilia is tinted, so it's meant to be like um, like a tinted moisturizer, but it's a serum consistency, um, and it's got SPF. It's amazing. But just sunscreen, I would use um, – there's a company called MD Solar Sciences. Um, we sell it at my salon, but you can also purchase it on Amazon. It's amazing. They have amazing um, – you know, uh, physical, uh, physical sunscreens and then super goop makes a really, really oh, like great product. So they have like a translucent powder. So if you are wearing makeup, you can reapply the powder and it's SPF 50. I love it. I always wondered if those worked, Joanna, those, those powders with SPF. They I know work, it's, huh? it's, it's weird, but I'm yeah. a tough grader. <laughs> yeah, and that one really works. I can't speak to all of them, but that one's okay. a really good one. Oh, good to know. We'll link that one in the show notes as well. We're getting yeah. um, another question here in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Best spot treatment. I'm assuming that's a blemish treatment. Yes. So um, product wise, in my own line, my exfoliating mask can be used as a spot treatment because it reduces inflammation, just flattens everything out. Um, not in my line. I really like Renee Rallo, who's a, another facialist and a friend of mine. She has a, um, anti-cyst, uh, serum that you can put on spots, which I really like. Oh, that um, sounds good. So those are kind of my favorites. Retinol is also a great, a great ingredient for any types of breakouts. Um, retinol is like kind of the gold standard if you are struggling with uneven skin or broken out skin, you should be using a retinol at night. Absolutely. That's good to know. Um, Melanie has this question and uh, she says, I love to use sleep masks to shield my eyes from light while I sleep. Are they damaging to my skin? I, I sleep with a sleep mask all the time as well. Do those damage the um, skin, Joanna, to, to sleep with a sleep mask every night? No, I mean, typically they're, um, they're made of really soft material. The only way that it would damage your skin was if it was something like um, super tight around your face. Like what we're seeing with, with the healthcare providers that are struggling with the, with the masks and their skin. Um, but no, I, I wouldn't, I, I sleep with a sleep mask too. I have a silk one and it's, it, you do. It, I don't, Yeah. If they're with this with the softer material, they're fine. Does sleeping, Susan is asking, does sleeping with a humidifier actually help to keep skin hydrated? Sure, especially um, in winter time when it's drier, or if you live in drier climates, absolutely more more moisture in the environment is going to give more moisture to your skin. Absolutely. I know that when I go to I, every year, I go to Las Vegas in June. <laughs> for a fine jewelry trade show. And mm -hmm. I ask at the beginning of that trip to have a humidifier put in my room. And I have to say it works, but, um, okay. We have a question here as well. It also makes a world of difference for your throat. Like just your, you know, your inside, Breathing. you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good point. That's a very good mm -hmm. point. Do you combine your super supernova serum with other serums or do you put on a moisturizer afterwards? So typically, um, when I use the Supernova Serum, I use it alone and then just put on eye cream on my eyes and mouth. But sometimes if I feel like I need extra hydration, I do put the Rejuvenating Serum on over. I am so doing this with the eye cream around the mouth. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm, late. I'm late to the party on that one. That's such a good one. It's okay. Um, you could catch up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay here's a good one um sydney asks do you recommend covering blemishes with makeup or is it better to let them breathe i think people think of struggle with that all the time 
What are your thoughts on that as somebody who looks at the skin of many? You know, Come honest, with makeup, let it breathe. Honestly, like during the day, you're, if, if this was, you know, post um, stay at home order and you're out in your day, you have to have some mm -hmm. kind of barrier between your skin and the outside world anyway, because you're getting right. pollution in right. your skin, um, you know, right. sun okay. damage. So you need to have something as a barrier, right? But even on the yeah. inside, you need to be wearing sunscreen or a barrier layer. So I personally, I'm a makeup person. I, I don't mm -hmm. mind makeup at all. And I think if you're using the right skincare ingredients, um, again, if you're breaking out, you should really invest in a retinol for nighttime, um, whether it be mine or someone else's, because it will help you control your breakout situation. Um, but you, you should be wearing something during the day. And I don't, I don't hate makeup at all. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's, uh, just as an aside to that, um, what are the causes, you know, is there a common denominator with people that tend to break out all, all the time? Is that sort of genetic? Is it hormones? Is it what they're eating? What, what when, when, you, when you see a client that tends to have, you know, repeated breakouts, what does that usually do to, or is it a combination of factors? You know, um, it's a combination of things. It absolutely has, you know, maybe genetics play a 20% a, a role in how your skin looks. And the rest of it is all your routine, all how you live, how you take care of yourself, how you manage stress. All of those things weigh in on, on how your skin looks. It's, it's really what I discuss in the book at yes. great length. Yes. That there's so much that goes into good skin and it's not something that you necessarily had to be born with. And that's kind of that's, the, the notion I want us to kind of do away with that idea that yeah. you, you know, that it has to do with your DNA. Because it really, it really right. doesn't, you know, there's right. so much we can do. Right. This idea of like sheer, he has great skin or we're born with great skin. There's, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, yeah. Nina wants to know if, if Nina wants to know, um, I heard that waxing eyebrows damages the skin and creates wrinkles. Is this true? Um, I mean, you know, there's, there are some arguments like any kind of pulling of the skin, um, could create that. I, I really wouldn't worry about it. It's such a small pulling. Like if, if someone's holding you down and you're waxing, right. I personally don't think that that's, going to be a, a huge factor in how you age. Um, I think more of a factor is whether you're wearing sunscreen every day and some of your lifestyle choices. So I would more focus on that than whether a little bit of wax is, is doing anything to you. Right. We have another question um, in the chat about breaking breakouts. Um, and do we treat body breakouts the same way that you treat a, fa a face breakout? Um, similarly, I mean, you can buy um, cleanser with salicylic acid um, and use that for your body in the shower. Um, you can, you know, um, you can put spot treatments on your body. Like uh, I've gotten a lot of questions lately that people have been breaking out on their bum because they've been sitting a lot. Oh, wow. That's right. That's a new problem. <laughs> uh -huh. So I would just say if you use any type of acne product on your, on your body, specifically your bum, you have to be really careful because it will dye your clothes. Like mm. if you're wearing um, mm. a serum or anything that has any type of acne, you know, like benzoyl peroxide, all of that might might bleach out your clothing. So you have to be super careful. Right. So I would perhaps go to using, um, you know, a salicylic acid cleanser in the shower and then, um, you know, not using moisturizer on the areas that you're breaking out and showering at night before bed. It's good, good to know. Our friend Mel on, he at Mel on Heels in the chat is, is saying that she has consistent small breakouts on her neck that mm -hmm. sort of happen consistently all the time. 
do you see do you see that and do you know what that might be attributed to um it is fragrance no it's typically um neck is typically hormonal mm -hmm. um sometimes it could be your your you need more of a lymphatic drainage massage mm. for the face and neck. Um, mm -hmm. But typically it's hormones. Um, if you have them very consistently, you know, after this is sort of, um, after the world starts to kind of go back to normal, I would um, probably go to a doctor to get blood work done and make sure that there's nothing that could be done internally to balance you out a little bit. Um, and then, you know, lymphatic drainage massage, um, is really key for that. Uh, and using clay masks, um, oh, clay. masks that have man mandelic acid is a very good ingredient. And like I said, retinol is awesome for any type of regular breaking out. Retinol is a real key ingredient. That's great advice for that issue. Um, Caroline asks, what is the quickest way to depuff eyes? I think that's a big question for a lot of people. Quickest way, the quick. So quick, you know, an upward pinch around the tops of the eye area and then pressure points underneath. And I would just do that three times through, you know, either that. when you're doing your eye cream at night, something like that. It's really helpful. I get puffy eyes too. Okay, pinching. Okay, that's great. Uh, Mindy's asking, what What are your thoughts? I, mean, I think we kind of just went over this. You sort of gave us your thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts on makeup after age 40? Is, is less more, in your opinion? Um, you know, I think that that's really personal. I, um, like, I'm not, I'm, turning 50 in a couple months. I'm not wearing much makeup today, but I like wearing makeup and I wear it whenever I want. Amazing. Thanks. But like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think it's fair to have rules about decades and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, That's right. Like, I don't think that there should be a rule about how you want to dress or, you know, how you want to be on the beach. I just don't think that that's right. I think it's whatever makes you feel beautiful for you. Cause we all know when, when I feel good, no one has to tell me anything. I feel confident and that's empowered. Cool. And if I don't feel good, mm -hmm. you know, my husband could tell me I look beautiful, but I'll just be like, ah, shut up. You know, I don't feel it, you know? Right. So it's really like right. an, an internal thing, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I a hundred percent agree. Um, another question here in the chat, very dry and flaky skin in the corners of the eyes. Is that just forgetting to exfoliate and get into that area or does that mean anything else? No, that's not it. That's eczema. Oh. Um, oh, it's and you need to be very, you need to be very careful. Um, you cannot exfoliate that area because it's really a skin sensitivity that's causing it. Um, right. I would seek out doing, looking for a face oil, um, something with jojoba, you know, something calming. We spoke about a do-it-yourself uh, mask with avocado and oatmeal. That kind of thing would be good for you. Um, something that's calming and healing. Perfect. You could do compresses of um, chamomile tea on your face. That would Perfect. also really work. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Maya is asking, what makeup product can I apply to my face after using your products to enhance my glow? Um, well, we spoke earlier about my love for the Ilia um, Tinted Face Serum. I think that that's a great one over my products. It's got skincare ingredients in it. It's Perfect. got hyaluronic acid and squalene, so it's super hydrating, and it'll make you look glowy. Yep. Yeah, I had a feeling you would say that. Um, Winnie is asking how you feel about self-tanner and spray tans. Well, um, we do offer spray tans at my salons, both in New York and Los Angeles. It's wildly popular. Um, there are a lot it of is. good formulas these days that are with natural ingredients and not so stinky. Um, 
you know, um, I think mm -hmm. they're great if that's what makes you feel yeah, good. I'm not. Be the, they used to. Yeah, they used to be orange and kind of smelly, and um, there are a lot of really good Smell brands. Terrible, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a super huge self tanner girl myself because I'm a, a redhead, but um, it's wildly popular right. at the salons. I don't think it's going anywhere as a trend. I bet more in LA than in New York. Would I guess? Have, did I guess that right? Um, no, I mean, we, in New York, we do spray tans like every five minutes. It's like insane how many people wow. like to be spray tanned. Yeah. Oh, I want to, I want to come in for a spray tan. Um, <laughs> which celeb, which celebrities do you feel have particularly great skin? Um, I, um, you know, I work on a lot of great actresses with great skin. Mindy Kaling has great skin. Um, Constance Wu has great skin. Julianne Moore is a great beauty. Elizabeth Moss, Maggie Gyllenhaal, um, Rachel Brosnahan. All of those girls have, have great skin. Belinda's um, they asking, started um, with great skin. It's not, and not just because I do their face. <laughs> right. Well, um, they maintain their skin, right? They, they yeah. do a good job at doing that as well. What can I do to my skin to diminish, diminish stretch marks? Um, you know, stretch marks is tricky because they're basically, it's like scarring, right? Um, so um, there's some lasering that you could do, microneedling you could do over it. But it's really, it depends on how deep they are and how uh, severe they are and how old they are. So it's not, there's no one answer for that. Uh, stretch marks are pretty tricky. Um, oftentimes, I always tell people the best thing that I could recommend for stretch marks is a spray tan because it hides it yeah, like beautifully. It yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Right. Um, which products and techniques firm the neck and the jawline best? Products and techniques. Um, in, in the salon, the best technique for firming the skin, we do microneedling with radio frequency. That's like a facelift. Um, wow. Non-invasively, we do microcurrent, um, which is amazing, very contouring. Um, at home, doing massage on your face every day is uh, is extremely lifting. Um, I have a um, a device I just launched, which is a, oh, I, a massage tool, which is really great. Um, those are kind of, and then for products, I would say retinol and vitamin C are key ingredients. So retinol at night and vitamin C for day are very lifting, um, stimulating of collagen, vitamin C protects your collagen. Um, so those two ingredients are key ingredients. And Joanna's magic, magic wand device that you just showed, we've actually linked that in the show notes as well. So, and we have it on the site, we've got it in our Joanna Vargas, our JV skincare shop, but it is, it is pretty incredible um, for that yeah. and for many other things. Um, top skin complaint from celebrities? Um, I would say that most celebs don't necessarily, I mean, I, I think like all of us, you know, when you're overly busy and running from thing to thing, you know, you're not sleeping enough, you have a lot of stress in your life. I think that that's like a common theme for anybody who works right. and who's kind of experiencing um, you know, career changes and career highs and so forth. So I think it's just sort of the same thing we all have. We don't have enough time to do what everybody thinks we should be doing. So I think most celebrity clients <laughs> are looking for how to kind of pare down what they do to five minutes and get the most out of it. Yep. So what are like the top three products, you know, that's what I hear over right, and over right. again. Right. Um, Evan is asking how much water do you personally drink in a day? Um, I 
I do drink a lot of water. Um, water gets to your skin last, though. So I drink water just because I'm a thirsty gal. Um, and it's good for your <laughs> for your health in general. But um, I also um, put avocado into my smoothie every day that I have for lunch, which is like berries, um, almond milk, greens, um, and I put avocado in there. So I, I have good fats in my diet that I do every day, um, which keeps yeah. my skin hydrated. In the same way that water does. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually, we also have a link to uh, the greens, the, the green powder that you mentioned um, on the podcast. Oh, awesome. Yes. One of the, our next question is about face masks. You have mm -hmm. how many in your, how many face masks do you have in your um, line, Joanna? I have uh, six sheet masks and two eye masks. That's right. Um, so Candace wants to know if you can just explain what each of your uh, face masks is best for. Okay, so I've got um, the Dawn mask, which is mandelic acid plus vitamin C. So brightening, evening out um, pigment. And it's also awesome if you break out, it controls breakouts for the skin. Um, I've got the Twilight mask which is epidermal growth factor, which is super healing for the skin. Wow, and very hydrating and soothing. I've got the Forever Glow, which is peptides, hyaluronic acid, very firming for the skin and a great like entry mask for anybody sort of worried about kind of preserving their skin's uh, elasticity. So it's great for younger, mm -hmm. younger people. I've got mm, the Eden perfect. Lift, which is um, stem cells. Um, so brightening, lift, and instant lift. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have Euphoria, which is a soothing mask um, for like, you know, uh, super sensitive skin. Um, I have the Glow to Glow, Glow to Go box, which is a mixture of all the masks. Oh, uh, we have a really, um, actually, we have a question from, not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but we have a question from Vanessa, which I think might be interesting to address right here. I want to buy my friend a pack of your masks for her birthday. Which should I buy, face or eye, and which kind? She hasn't tried any of your masks yet. And you're buying it, for, she's buying it for a friend? I would say that the friend best for mask, birthday. Forever Glow, it's the top selling mask. Um, it is. Or you could or you could do the glow to go box and then your friend can get a little sampling of all the masks and she can, you know, diagnose her skin in the moment and decide which one is right for her. Yeah. Maybe we should put that in the show notes as well. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know more about this ingredient of yours. I don't need matrix m matrixel matrixel three, 3000 um, in mm -hmm. your eye masks. Tell me everything. I want to know about that ingredient well i mean it's it like a, it's, a, like a miracle ingredient it's definitely a good ingredient for the eye area because studies studies that jv skincare has not performed but have been performed by others have known that um you know it helps with um wrinkle depth over time um, so you're meant to use it on a regular basis and it really shows a huge difference in, you know, changing the depth and perception of the, uh, the wrinkles in the, in the treated area. Um, so it's, it's one of those ingredients that I really like because there's science behind it. Um, but you know, for my own products, I make products so that you feel like you look better and more enhanced. So in the eye masks, I have them. I have it there because I want you to feel like when you take off the eye mask, you're ready for makeup or you're ready to face the world and you look great. Right, right. They're incredible. And we have one final question from Rebecca who wants to know, what are you eating right now and what are you avoiding eating right now in quarantine? Um, well, my husband and I, uh, several months ago, um, changed our diet to being completely vegan. Wow. Um, 
which was more for health reason than for philosophical reasons. Yes. Um, so we're eating um, lots of like bean stews and curries and things like that. Things that like make you feel like really like homey and warm. Um, but we're not eating meat. We're not eating dairy and we're not eating greens at all. How long have you, how long have you been doing this new diet, Joanna? Um, since, um, since early January. Do you, how do you feel? Do you see a huge difference in how you feel? I definitely feel like I have more energy. Um, wow. after I stopped eating dairy, I lost 10 pounds, like in the first two weeks, which was both amazing and, and sort of wow. sad that like, it makes you, I mean, in some bodies, you know, dairy is very sugary and apparently in mine it is. Um, but I feel great. My skin has never looked better. And I think it's from the diet. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Great. Oh, it you're inspiring me to maybe go vegan or at least vegetarian. Um, all right, Joanna, it was great speaking with you. Everybody, the podcast on Story and Rain Talks is now live. Um, so you can find it on Apple Podcasts, on Google Play, on Stitcher, and on Spotify. And as I mentioned during our chat, there's a link to some of Joanna's favorite items and products that you can take a look at there. Thanks so much, Joanna. Talk to you soon. Thanks for having me.